Yo, 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 what's up? This your boy M. Breezy back at it again, man, like I always do around this time. What's up, Cowboys Nation? What's up, YouTube? Let's get right into it, man. Let's get right into it. Um, hey, man, some at some time, man, some point in time, we got to be real with ourselves about our quarterback situation with Randy Quarter Prescott. Now, I know a lot of you guys are big fanboys of this guy because he does things in a regular season that will – have you believed that he's this guy you know that can get the job done that he's this elite quarterback that's going to show up in the playoff when he get there because of the regular season stats that he be putting up and you know i've been watching you know i've been going around youtube watching you know other guys you know put out videos especially that prescott fanboys they always putting up clips of analysts Talk about they had enough of the Dyke Prescott slander. He's been treated unfairly by his, uh, by the organization and by the teammates and by some family members. And, you know, kind of somewhat trying to have a sympathy party for Dyke Prescott. But this guy's getting paid all this money and there's no time for sympathy parties. And not, especially not with me. Because when you can't get past the division round, or the wild card round year after year after year. It is a wild card and done or get to the division round and done. I mean, this this is what this guy do. And But some of you guys are right with this. But you're supposed to be football fanatics. We haven't won anything in 20, going on 29 years. But you guys want to accept mediocrity? I thought some of you guys were better than that. I thought you guys was a football junkies. I thought you guys was true Dallas Cowboy fans. But to, to me, what it seems like, you guys are okay with just, you know, winning the NFC East or being a, uh, uh, every now and again, every other year because we don't win back to back. But that's not happening since 2004, Philadelphia Eagles. So you guys are satisfied with winning the division every other year or beating the NFC East teams, you know, to get bragging rights because that would have seemed like to me you guys are sacrificed with that but i got a little truth for you see the things that you guys won't show you Dallas cowboy uh content creators you Dak prescott fanboys content creators i'm gonna show the stuff that you guys won't show because like, like i say you guys want to show stuff to make you feel good about your argument and i'm gonna play stuff that make me feel good about my argument because you see it's go both ways see i'm a fan of the Dallas cowboys too but see i can be objective I don't drool like the mouth over Dak Prescott like some of you guys do. Uh, you know, because you got a lot of fanboys down there in your comment session that, you know, Lord Dak Prescott just like you do, and you thrive on that. And you only play stuff, uh, play stuff to make you and your and your boys feel good, you little, you little uh, Dak Prescott f clan. You know, y'all love the, the, the Dak Prescott game. Whatever y'all want to call y'all self. Because y'all guys are allergic to the truth. Because you can't handle the truth. And I see it a whole lot. But, hey, I'm going to play y'all very special guy, Mr. Stephen A. Smith. And I know this guy jokes about the Cowboys. He he, he uh, get a lot of ratings when the Cowboys lose. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes the guy tell the truth, man. The honest God knows the truth. And that's something you guys can't handle. See, I'm going to play this stuff that's going to hurt you to the core. And if you, and if you can't stomach what I'm about to play about what Stephen A. Smith says about Dak Prescott, I suggest you tune out. Don't, don't listen to this video because, you know, you, you fanboys, y'all get weak on the stomach. I don't want y'all getting sick uh, uh, to the truth because you guys are allergic to the truth. You can't handle the truth. So let's get right into the truth serums about what Stephen A. Smith had to say about Dak Prescott. Like I said, you fanboys, I try to warn y'all. I disagree with you. We First know. of all, let me get out. Let me, and I'm very serious. I'm not trolling the Cowboys here or whatever because, you know, I hear, I've heard a lot of people speak about fair and unfairness and all of this other stuff. No, you don't throw your teammates under the bus. No, you don't publicize your level of discontent with them in specificity, getting into details. But damn it, if you ain't happy with somebody, you ain't happy with somebody. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? We've all had that experiences in, in our careers. I know I have. I ain't apologizing for that to a damn soul. 
I meant what I meant. I said what I said throughout the years. I stand by it, okay? Now, that doesn't mean you go into details and excoriate somebody and throw them under the bus. But it does mean that you don't sit around in public view with this George Foreman smile on your face like you've made hundreds of millions of dollars selling those grills. No, if you're not happy, you're not happy because it's about production. Now, we got to look at Dak Prescott and we got to call it for what it is, okay? The reality of the situation with Dak Prescott is this, ladies and gentlemen. He hasn't stepped up and gotten it done. Right. And, the, and the Dallas Cowboys, I don't care if you are a fan, I don't care if you are the owner, I don't care if you are the GM who happens to be the owner, I don't care if you're the coach, I don't care if you're teammates. At some point in time, I got to look at you. Yes, you went in 2022 from leading the league in interceptions to 2023 leading the league in touchdown passes. I get all of that. Yes, you won about four division titles. You've averaged about a 10-6 and six record. During the regular season from September to through December, you're that dude. You definitely can compete with everybody. But we understand what America this team comes with. We understand the pressure and the obligations that come with it. Okay? I'm here at ESPN every single day. There, it's not hope. Right. It's not wishes. It's expectations. Right. But so you gotta deliver. Right. And if you don't deliver, yo, we're gonna get somebody else who will. It's just that simple. We understand we walk up in here every single damn day with an expectation. Mm -hmm. We the worldwide leader. You say you got get up, you got first take, you got McAfee in the house, you got Sports Center, you got PTI that's been really been number one. We number one in the morning. PTI been number one for 20 years. Period. Tony Kornheiser's in his 70s. Michael Wilbon's in his 60s. There's an expectation. Every single damn day. They didn't sit up there and say, thank you. We so appreciate the job that you've done. Could you continue to do it? No. They said, yo, you see this check we give you, excuse right. me, it comes with expectation. Yeah. Yeah. Dak Prescott is two and five in the postseason. It is tied. For the worst quarterback record in the postseason in NFL history, with a minimum of five starts. Did you got? Did you fanboys hear that? Did you that, that Prescott fanboy hear that? Tied for the worst in NFL history with a minimum of five starts in the playoffs. And you guys are in y'all feelings over this, over this, man. You, you it, it, hey, man. You can't make this stuff up, man. You can't make it. I, I, hey, I understand you, you, you. I'm a Cowboy fan too, and I love the hell out of my team. But I'm not gonna sit up here year after year and watch the same thing happen again and thinking that it's gonna be different. That things are gonna change. No, I don't have no trust in Dak Prescott, none whatsoever. And if you do, hey man, I don't know. I don't know what to say about you. You, you need to check yourself. Is you a real fan or not? Facts. At some point in time. You're in the midst of a $160 million deal. Last year of the deal, you count a $59.4 million with well, that's a cap hit, assuming they do absolutely nothing. You looking for the bag, but what have you done to earn it? Do you know what comes with this? You got a billionaire owner. When we go sit up there and we're going to excoriate J Jerry Jones. And by the way, I can't wait. I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to call him. I'm going, I'm going, I got to take Jerry Jones out to lunch today. We got to talk. Yeah. Because I'm tired of all of this nonsense that he's saying and couching all of this stuff. The man hasn't gotten it done. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean I want you gone. It doesn't mean that I want you to go elsewhere. But it does mean you know why I'm painting you, bro. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is, we're looking at you smooth. Molly commenting about your outfit every week because she dresses, she's a fashionista herself, and talking about how fly and how together you look. Everybody's applauding your character because you are a wonderful human being and a role model. They're talking about your verbiage and how supportive you are. See, like we said, we're not talking about that press guy as a man. We know that press guy got good characters, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about that press guy. What have you done for the Dallas Cowboys to update your resume? Okay, I get it. You throw six less interceptions than you did last year. Bravo. We'll give you a standing ovation for that. But guess what? You at least won a wild card game last year with those 15 interceptions that you threw, which were league leading after missing five games of the season. But this year, you cut down on your interception, but you went home early. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> the, the, the math don't add up <laughs> Your math ain't math at home, boy How class personified you are Everything is there Until the playoffs arrive And then this is what we see Come up small he, he, no, no. Look, at this. Look at my hands Look at my hands This is him That's how he looked Against a team Who's one of the youngest in the NFL Against a quarterback Who was playing in his very first NFL game You did not lose 34-31 You were down 48-7 to 
to 16. The defense didn't just suck. You threw an interception early. Then you threw another pick six. Mm -hmm. Yo. Tell you the truth. Tell you the truth, Stephen A. Smith. We know you criticize Daddy Cowboy fans and you clown us real good. But hey, but sometimes it's warranted, man. You do tell the truth sometimes regardless of what these fanboys say when they're in their feelings. I don't like it either. Tell you the truth, Stephen A. Smith. So don't get it twisted. But this man telling the truth about Dyke Prescott. Sometimes you got to got uh, let it go, man. Let it go. Get out your feelings, man. For real. Yeah. We gotta stop pacifying this brother. So you gotta are you, produce. Are you saying it's more it's more mental than the talent? Yes. yes. That's exactly you what I'm saying. The you think the pressure got to him? Yes. You saw the look on his face. Yes. The announcers in the first quarter was like, "Hey, they he, he don't look right. He had a look on his did face." You feel, but right. did you feel that way about Lamar Jackson as well? Yes. Yes. Lamar, yes. 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 Lamar, listen, get, Lamar yes. get are there any too? two quarterbacks that took more criticism this season yes. than Lamar Jackson and Dak Prescott, and arguably? Both delivered choke jobs. Very important point here. Europe might have said choke job. And Molly, at one point in time in this season, she was taking up a Dyke Prescott. She she was taking up a Dyke Prescott. You know, that how people come down on Dyke Prescott and Dallas Cowboys. Uh, you know, when they went on their, on their little winning streak. And they say that they're not being talked about enough when they win, but only criticized when they lose. But then you got a lot of the analysts that took the side of that Cowboy and took the side of Dyke Prescott and what did he do? Come out there and lose in a wild card game to the youngest team in the NFL. <laughs> Carry on. Lamar Jackson did that in the AFC Championship game. Right. Dak Prescott never got there. Didn't he balled working. out the week before. Mm -hmm. He balled out in a playoff game a few years ago before he got injured the last two years and he missed the postseason. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is Lamar Jackson may have messed up in the AFC Championship game, but we still saw him perform come playoff time. As the pressure mounts, right. Dak Prescott gets more nervous. His own brother is talking about how I, I wish I could get him up out of here. Because you can't handle the pressure that comes with Big D. That's the same thing I've been saying for a very long time. Dyke Prescott cannot handle that pressure. He can't handle that pressure, man. The man can't read defenses. It seems like he just goes blind. He can't throw an accurate football. He's all over the place. Hey, when it comes down to the playoff, this is when he really becomes a one-read quarterback. And if that first read is not there, forget about it. I mean, your nerve already bad and your adrenaline rushing. Hey, man, this guy just losing it. Like Eminem said, lose yourself. Dyke Prescott loses himself at the most precious time in the playoffs. With Big D, not the NFL. I think if it was in another organization, I don't think this happens. But in Big D, at some point in time, bright lights affect people. Right. That's fair. But the question says, is he being untreated fairly? He's not being untreated right. unfairly. Hold on. Hold on. In, on. in depth, I get that. I said that. I, I, I get that. Let her finish her point. I get that. But when you talk about that, defense didn't show up. Good. But we still have teammates, parents, and, and siblings Ooh. talking about that. Nobody showed up in right. a way that they needed to. And all these people want to get paid. Yes, that got his money. Mm -hmm. So I, I I'm not saying that he is exempt from criticism from the outside. We could talk about the glazed look on his face, how in the big moments right. he seems to wilter. But in your own building. But I can challenge you with the pushback on this. You have seen it because of your years of covering the mm -hmm. NFL where a team gets demoralized and all of a sudden they sink because they know their brother ain't going to step up. And I told you before this season, when I was at the Errol Spence Terrence yes. Crawford fight in yes. July, the whole Cowboys team was there to support Errol Spence. You said they probably jinxed him, but that's a different subject for another day. <laughs> the point is, they were all there. Yeah. And they said, yo, they were all confident about themselves. They were hopeful about him. That is not an accident. We got to stop this. We got to stop this nonsense. I love Dak Prescott. I got to say one thing. Though. He got he. Hey, man, we got to stop. We, as Dallas Cowboy fan, we got to stop, man. We got to stop. Now, I, I don't know if Dak Prescott is getting a lot of, you know, sympathy because, quote, unquote, he's a black quarterback. Look, man, I, I, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that, man. I don't care what color you is. If you're not getting the job done, you're not getting the job done. So you can miss me with all that because I want to win. I want to win. I want to win bad. I, like I said, I've been, a, I've been a Cowboy fan too long, man. This is this here, you got to stop. You can blame Jerry Jones, you blame everybody you want to blame. But this team over the last past three years 
is had a good enough team, defense and offense, to at least make it to a championship game or a Super Bowl. Come on, man. Come on now. Now, if, that, if Jerry Jones let Dak Prescott start the season without a new contract, you guys can already see what, where, where we headed at. And I would applaud Jerry Jones to the fullest because he's not, uh, you know, going to extend Mike McCarthy's contract. He's going to let him play out his last year because he's not, you know, there has been no talk about uh, his extension. And we know that Prescott, you know, that, that extension coming up because we're going gonna to count $59 million against the cap. So it's going to get very interesting the upcoming weeks. Uh, and y'all might say that Dak Prescott hold a lot of cards because he got no trade clause. He, he's got a no franchise tag clause. But the Cowboys got Trey Lance on that bench. That's Jerry Jones wild card. So Dak Prescott not willing to take a discount. And like from what I've been hearing that some of you guys are saying that Dak Prescott should leave. Let him leave. Please ask for a trade, Jerry Jones. Please drop that no trade, no, no trade clause and tell Jerry Jones where you want to be traded at. Please. I, oh look, I'm praying that you do. I'm praying that you do because your fanboys are in their feelings saying that you should leave the Dallas Cowboys. Man, leave. Please leave. I bet most of those players on that team will be glad when you up out of here. Because you're, you're the main reason why we're not winning. You're the main reason. So they, so they can get involved in their feelings all they want to because I don't, I don't care about none of that. I, I don't see none of that. I don't care about that. I don't care about none of that. If you want to leave, leave. If your brother can convince you to leave, listen to your brother. Listen to your brother and leave. Go to Washington. Go to the Falcons. Anywhere they want to they go. And your fan boys, take them with you. Take them with you. I won't I won't care. We go one and 16, 2 and 15, 3 and 14. I wouldn't care. Because guess what? At the end of the day, we ain't going nowhere no way when the playoffs start. So why not get a good pick? But who knows what Trey Lance is gonna do? Because the guy has not had a chance to show himself. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for this offseason. When it's Super Bowl over with, hey man, it's going to get real interesting out here in Cowboy Country. Hey, and I, hey, I am here all for it. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. You can leave me a comment down below if you will. I know your fanboys you probably won't because you're in your feelings. And if you do, come on, man. I invite you to try to debate you and your scary quarterback, scary Prescott. That's what I call him, scary Prescott. That's his new name. Because when the playoff starts, the guy gets scared. He need to be on a TV show naked and afraid. Hey, man, until the next time, it's your boy Breezy. I'm out. I love I know you fanboys mad, but I don't give a you know what. Crazy.